So you're ready to break out the motherboard and start putting it into that new case. This is the Project 7 series where I go into long form detail about how to build a gaming PC here in 2021. But before I can talk about motherboards and CPUs and GPUs, you and I need to have a, an awkward conversation. And you see, what makes this awkward is, well, you know what? I'll let them speak for themselves. I wanna, ow! <laughs> <laughs> that turned off the mod. So here's the thing. It's just a video of you shocking yourself. No, think about how high the ESD must be if I'm shocking myself not touching the monitor and it's going off. What happens if I touch a... <clears throat> Ready? Oh God, where should I touch? Oh my God! That was much more painful. <laughs> what the hell? It's not dying. We go through so much pain for nothing. So what makes this awkward is I respect those tech viewers. I respect what they do. They've provided me hours of entertainment, hundreds of hours. They are far more entertaining than I could ever be, but they are semantically making a point in order to make a funny video. And that's where, to me, it's a little bit awkward because I kind of have to correct them. You see, they're saying the word destroy when the word they really should be using is damage. Electrostatic discharge, the feeling that happens when you rub roll socks on carpet and then touch the doorknob, that can damage your gaming component. The reason that most of these components, when they get in your hands, cannot really be destroyed with ESD is the level of testing and classification and validation that occurred. I have been in those labs. Through my day job, my employer has several of these labs, and I've been in those graphics labs where I've seen the destroyed cards, and I've seen the damage that ESD can cause. So I want to make sure you understand. It's not a matter of protecting your investment from being destroyed. It is a matter of protecting your investment from being damaged. Now, there are multiple levels of electrostatic discharge. The things that you and I see when we touch that doorknob, that's about 35,000 volts and higher. The classification standards that govern your components range from 2,000 as the upper end to 8,500 as the upper end, depending upon if it's your person or the device itself that's actually causing the ESD. Those standards are at a certain level that it would almost be nearly imperceptible to you to actually see, feel, or otherwise know that they occur. And that's why these are so problematic. You can have an electrostatic imbalance, not know it, and cause damage to your components and still never know it. So let's talk about the three things that can occur. The first, is a fusion of metals. So there's different connectors and there's different elements that are inside of all of your ICs. Those are integrated circuits and those make up every component that's in your system, except for the case, but even some cases now have things like LEDs bolted on that have ICs in them. Those ICs have little tiny wires and even inside of them there's wires and there's circuitry. Those little tiny wires can fuse together creating a connection that really wasn't supposed to be made because of the amount of heat generated by that 35,000 volts of current that you applied to the component. The second kind, that same heat can cause the metals to actually separate as well. That separation might occur from the actual component that it was supposed to be connected to or a shrinkage in the wire itself that shrinkage is going to degrade the quality of the connection as well as force additional heat and additional current through a smaller amount of metal, which can cause problems and further degrade the quality of your components down the road. The third is oxidation. That heat will draw oxygen towards the source and it can cause additional corrosion and oxidation of the, of the metals that are used causing interference and causing problems again down the road. 
That's ultimately the story here. When you have electrostatic discharge, it's not today that you're worried about. It's the longevity of the component that you have. It's the quality and the reliability of that component, the stability of that component, and the performance potential that a GPU, CPU, RAM, that is what you paid for. You are paying for performance. ESD causes performance to become unstable and unpredictable, exactly what you do not want. If you enjoy gaming performance content, consider clicking that like button, maybe even subscribing. If you're already a subscriber, please visit patreon.com slash thegrayingtech to learn how you can help me pay it forward. So how do you avoid it? There are three ways that you can avoid electrostatic discharge. The first, touch your case. The second, touch any kind of metal object around. I don't advocate for either of those. For you see, how hard was it to get that GPU or the CPU, whatever the current hard thing to get was? There's always a component that's out there that's really hard to get your hands on. Wouldn't it be tragic if for $7 you could have avoided damaging that component? So just think about that a little bit and do the math equation there. It doesn't make sense to spend $1,000 on a graphics card and rely on secondhand methods in order to protect it. So there's only one true method that I recommend, and that is something like these. These are designed to balance the equation to get that extra negative or positive electrical balance out of the way. Pull it away from you, pull it away from the component, and now you don't have to worry about it. So for $7, you can pick up something that you can wear on your shoes. You never have to worry about ESD again, but these do tend to wear out over time because they make contact with the ground. And let's be honest, who really wants to wear their shoes around their house? The second option is probably one that we've seen all the time, and that is a simple wristband like this. Simply slide it on, make sure the metal is connected to you, and then you need to ground this. The third option is one that you've also seen in numerous ones of my videos, and this is an anti-static silicone mat. These, well, this particular one you can pick up for about $27 if you want the misspelled version, that is. If you want a standard size one that maybe doesn't include some extra components, they're around 20 bucks. So from $7, to about $27, you can protect all of your system. You can protect every component that's there, and if you decide to upgrade or do some more work later on, you have the stuff that you need to protect your componentry. So let's talk about how to set this up. First, you saw me actually connect it here to my wrist. Then you would connect this to the mat itself. Doesn't really matter where, in this instance, I have it here, but a lot of the times there's a thinner portion of the mat that I connect to right over here. Then I have this additional cable, which I then also connect to the mat. And just off camera, I have a bunch of these things. You can kind of see it right here. Sometimes you accidentally see it in my videos too. Sorry about that. I have these big solid metal poles and things that are able to absorb the imbalanced current and draw all of that away, causing this entire setup right here to be properly grounded. So if I touch anything, there's no low voltage ESD that can possibly occur. Everything is mitigated because it's not just that 35,000 volt that you have to worry about. It's the little tiny volt ESD that really causes instability in these kind of things. If you are interested in picking one of these up, there's Amazon affiliate links down below. Please, I encourage you to peruse, pick something out, and then let's start talking about motherboards.